Hey guys, this is Peter from Build Boeing. In this video, I'd like to show you how you can make your own gauge. You can use gauges from Open Cockpit and assemble them yourself, or use my overhead panel. Uh, if you do that, you have extra gauges in the print, and I'd like to show you how you can use those. And so, this is what you need: four screws for the gauge, two for mounting onto the overhead. And uh, over here, I have uh, this is already assembled, so I can't take it apart. But here are two layers of foam, and you can use plexiglass if you want. And there's the needle. Um, here I have a shaft and the gears, and here's an extra set of plexiglass. Spacers, you can use those or screws. I use here two centimeter spacer here and five, uh, half a centimeter here. That's 20 millimeters and five millimeters. Okay, a piece of a transparent plexiglass. This is used as front for glass on the front, so no scratches on that one. Um, and finally here is an extra piece of foam that I've made as front for the gauge on the overhead panel itself. I've always had trouble finding out where to place the servo engine uh, in relation to the shaft, but uh, I found a method here I'd like to show you. Okay, so the problem is that these teeth are very small, so when you put it, uh, install the servo, you need to be very precise that these connect, otherwise the gauge won't work. So a way of doing this is to take the shaft with the gear on and place it here in the hole in the middle. And then take the gear from the from the servo and a pen. And just align them and uh, draw a line here, then arch. And this arch will show you where you can put the servo engine. The output from the servo engine should go where the black line is. So you can place it like this. There we are. If you use my overhead print, you can use these uh, secondary gauges uh, from the print as background for your gauge. Mount them on a piece of plexiglass. And um, then let's go make the gauge. And so this is the APU gauge from my overhead panel. Uh, you can see here I have two layers of uh, foam uh, installed. You can use plexiglass as well. And on the back part here, I have the sticker from my print um, glued on, and on the front here, I have a second layer. This uh, piece in the front acts as a uh, spacer for the needle to move in, and I've uh, painted it gray on the inside. And this one goes in front, this is a third piece of uh, foam, it goes in front uh, of and on the overhead panel. And uh, I've cut it, you can see here, three millimeters out. Uh, in the back and uh, that makes room for um, this piece of uh, plexiglass that should more or less fit in here and then act as a, a, piece, a piece of glass there and that mount is then in front of the overhead. Once you've figured out where to place the servo, uh, I've made an outline of the servo here and then made four holes for mounting and here a hole in the middle where the servo output is coming through. So then it's just a matter of taking this piece of plexiglass and put it on the servo there, ready to mount. And just one more thing i like to show you. Um, you can see this white piece here, a uh, white piece of uh, foam of I've installed here. It heightens the, the plexiglass a bit. This is where the two gears from the shaft and the servo engine meet. So there's going to be a piece of, you can see here, it heightens uh, it heightens a bit. And the, there's going to be an extra piece of plexiglass on top. And, uh, but as there's like half a centimeter of room, when the gear come on here, this white piece of plastic makes sure that uh, it doesn't move too much up and down. And so the gears will be in place all the time. So just mount something there to heighten it. A small note on the servo engines, here I have the uh, Hitech 311, which is a very good servo engine. They are around $10, uh, $10 uh, $14 on eBay, and uh, some of the best you can use for the cockpit. Here's the th S3003, also of a reasonable quality and only $4. They are a bit more noisy and not as precise as the uh, Hitech 311, but Good value for money. And over here is a third option: is a micro servo, very small one. And uh, in my my perspective, they are too noisy and unprecise and not very good. So don't use those. They are they're not worth it. 
So you spent over sixty dollars on the thirty oh three instead. Okay, so the servo here is now mounted onto this back piece of uh, plexiglass. And you can see uh, if I can focus. Uh, there you can see the spacer and that the gear doesn't touch but just is on top of the spacer and close to the, the mounting screws here as well. It uh, doesn't touch so it's a close call but this one should work. Uh, so this is um, this is the back piece. A servo engine on, gear is mounted and it's uh, ready to uh, go into the other part. I've made two holes here that uh, then connects with the uh, with this piece over here. Of course I've I lined the holes before I drilled them so they're the same. On the front here, uh, this is the front part of the gauge and uh, I've mounted it uh, with two screws, one here and one here that goes through and uh, then with spacers connecting further down through the gauge. The needle uh, here of the gauge is just made from a white foam, the same material as the rest of the gauge and just uh, I just cut it in point in a pointy figure and uh, added some black paint. Here in the back side, this plexiglass plate here with the gear goes uh, on the servo engine and make sure the plexiglass plate makes sure it doesn't move too much. So all that's left to do is to put these two uh, pieces together like this. Swish, perfect fit. Should be. This is like my fourth recording of this. Trial and error is the way to go. Okay, it goes in here and uh, in locks with the other gear. However, before you do this, make sure that the servo engine is at the end position and uh, that the needle is placed just a bit before zero here. Otherwise, you would end up uh, with a servo that's wrong calibrated and the needle would either, either be here or here when at the zero position. So make sure that it's uh, at zero and uh, that way the gauge then can go all the way up from a zero and uh, up from here to here. When that's done, get the gears to interact and then uh, mount it and you we're ready to go. So this is the, uh, the gauge. Uh, from the back here we have the servo, then the plate to make sure it doesn't, that the shaft doesn't move and gears are kept in place. Two centimeters of space, and then the two layers of Fermilux, and that's that's more or less it. That's the gauge. Now this is a bit difficult to explain, but I'll try. Uh, this gauge is a standalone unit. I have a screw here that's then connect to further down through the gauge, but everything is one single unit here, and this one screw here as well. These two then mount the gauge, but they're not connected to the overhead panel itself. This is a standalone unit here. Uh, I have one hole here and one hole here to connect to the overhead. And the reason for this is, early on I had one screw going all the way through and it was just impossible to mount. So this goes in front with the holes for the overhead panel. Just make sure that you do one unit for the gauge and then extra holes for mounting here and here. And you can see on the back side here is where it comes out, doesn't connect to anything on the gauge. And so it's just a matter of taking the gauge here and uh, install it, mount it on the overhead panel. Like, see, if we can get it there, like this. So now the gauge is placed in place and then I put the, the front with the, the extra plexiglass here, I put that in front. And so now the gauge is installed, time to test it. And uh, just put on the start a switch here and um, I have no sound so you can just watch it spool up shortly. The gate is connected to an uh, open cockpit servo card and uh, now you can see it move and everything is handled by the wonderful ProSim 737 suite. So this was my take on how to make a gauge for your uh, cockpit. I hope you enjoyed it. This is Peter from Villa Boeing. Take care.